When I started journaling 10 years ago, it quickly became a big part of my life. I had more mental clarity, an outlet for my thoughts, a compost heap for inspiration, and served as a way to look back at my life later on. So lately, over the past couple of months, I've been trying to be more intentional with the things in my life and how I spend my time. And in my previous video, I briefly mentioned that journaling is one of the ways I do that. But I wanted to make a separate video on the topic because there are specific approaches that I do that genuinely make me love journaling, but also help me to get the most out of it. Not only for my mental health, but for my creativity as well. So there are three key things that have totally transformed my experience with journaling. The first one is to have no minimum. And I do say minimum and not maximum because we tend to associate journaling with writing a lot, like heaps and heaps of pages. But sometimes we just don't have a lot to say, but that shouldn't stop us from sitting down to write anyway. I actually got this approach from something called morning pages. It's a term that was coined in the book The Artist's Way. Basically, morning pages is the practice of writing down your thoughts first thing in the morning every single day. This is supposed to just encourage the stream of consciousness and help you clear your mind. And while I was in my whopping one term in college, this was one of the only assignments in my class called Creativity. So the main thing with morning pages is that I only really wrote down the things that I felt compelled to write about in that moment. And sometimes that meant three pages, and sometimes it was just three words. And so while I don't do morning pages specifically anymore, what I liked about it was that I got over this notion that I had to write a lot every single time I sat down to write. I don't force myself to write about everything, just what's relevant to me in that moment, and not dragging it out just for the sake of filling up a page. Because if you do that, then you'll probably get bored or it will start feeling like a chore. So by having no minimum, I really got over this word count expectation and it took a lot of pressure off and I actually started to enjoy it more because it wasn't so serious all the time. Number two, be unfiltered. So this is probably one of the most, if not the most important thing when it comes to journaling to make it effective is that you can't be afraid to put your thoughts out onto the paper in front of you or else you won't be able to figure it out fully. And while this seems like common sense, you'd be surprised how we automatically sometimes just put a filter on what we're saying and hold back on what we're actually thinking. Because one, we are used to the expectation that someone might read it, or two, we think that it needs to be the next Virginia Woolf, and no, journaling is not any for any of those things. In order to make journaling really effective, especially if you're looking for more mental clarity, you have to let your guard down and you have to be 100% completely honest with yourself and just remember that no one, that's not for anybody else to see, it's just for yourself, for you to figure out what's going on in your head. Number three, right from a stream of consciousness. So this is exactly what it sounds like and it goes hand in hand with the previous tip. Like I said earlier, I usually sit down and just write what's relevant to me in that moment. And then from that, I just go off whatever else comes to me. So that's kind of writing from a stream of consciousness, just whatever comes into your mind at that moment. Another way to look at it is writing in pen. And I only mean this in a figurative sense. I mean, if you only have pencils, that's fine but what i mean by this is try not to erase what you write down it may not be the most perfect sentence or the next best-selling novel and that's okay it's not supposed to be but this practice of writing in pen helps encourage the stream of consciousness and encourages the flow of your writing and eliminates the need for erasing or backspacing again this is just about understanding ourselves a bit better and getting our thoughts out onto the paper in front of us with the least amount of resistance. So after I combine all of these things, not giving yourself a minimum, being unfiltered, and writing from a stream of consciousness is when I like to reread what I wrote. And through this process, I usually find a lot more clarity because of this specific approach. But better mental clarity is not the only thing that I get from journaling.
Old journal entries often inspire me to turn them into some sort of a story later on, or at least for a reference for a project. There's actually a few examples here on this channel, and I know that a lot of artists and writers and filmmakers also have a similar process. It often fascinates me when directors use their real-life experiences into their movies, whether it be upfront or subtly. For a while, I didn't even really know if there was a term for it. Um, sometimes I would call it the vault. <laughs> it was way more eloquently put than I could have ever said by the fantastic author Neil Gaiman. I think it's really important for a writer to have a compost heap. Everything you read, the things that you write, things that you listen to, people you encounter, they could all go in this compost heap and they will rot down and out of them grow beautiful stories. And I'd like to think that my journal is going to be part of this compost heap, is part of this compost heap. When you don't limit yourself to what you write about, whether it's life or an idea that you need to make sense of, or a thought that you woke up with. These little thoughts and ideas and details, I think we'd be surprised how valuable they could be at the right time. And even if you're not a writer or a filmmaker, this combo heap, this is the beauty of documenting your life. Rereading old entries later on in life, you'll see how much you've changed, how much you've grown as a person. How the things, the people, and the places around you have changed as well. It seems with every year, time moves faster and faster. And as I turned 25 earlier this year, that's something that I think about a lot. I know that eventually the details of my days right now will fade. But how beautiful is it that when you read an old entry, you remember exactly how you felt in that moment. And that's the power of keeping a journal. That's the power of writing. And that in itself is pretty worth it to me. So I hope this helped you if you are considering starting a journaling habit. It is something that I genuinely love and adore and a lot of my inspiration comes from writing. So hopefully I highlighted some of the benefits from this method of journaling um, and I will leave timestamps in the description below as well as a resource to morning pages in case you want to try that out. I will say that journaling is not so much of a daily thing for me but a very frequent thing meaning that I journal every time that I need mental clarity, which is two, th two to three times a week, sometimes a lot more, <laughs> depending on my state of mental health. So if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. And in the meantime, you can find me at Life of Riza on Instagram and more newly on TikTok and Twitter. On those platforms, I'll be posting more like behind the scenes or things that have been inspiring me lately. Anyways, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.